let us now go further and talk about how to determine the domain of composite functions right so this will be an important question that is determination of domain of a composite function determination of the domain of domain let us say for domain for composite function how will you determine this hmm. so i have let us say f o g of x hmm, which is equal to f of g of x we are talking about all functions that are real value so in order to determine the domain there must be some rules that you should follow i will list the rules and that essentially says the following rules the following rules must be followed and therefore the following values must be excluded from input values of x right so uh, this is again in concordance with what we have seen earlier that uh, the, if you remember we have seen some conditions right where x should be in the domain of g and g of x should be in the domain of f so again uh, what what we are discussing now is in concordance with that but here we were seeing what are the possible values now what we are seeing is what are the possible exclusions that means what value should be excluded from the input values so there are basically two rules the first rule which corresponds to the first rule of this that x should be in the domain of g that means x if x is not in the domain of g then i cannot include it then x cannot be in the domain of the function f o g right so i am talking about f o g when you talk about g o f you will talk about the uh, x belonging to domain of f impli implies so x does not belong to domain of f implies x does not belong to domain of g o f so just remember the function the order in which they are taken it matters okay and in a similar manner when i talked about gx belonging to domain of f right so the set of all x's such that gx does not belong to domain of f so this is the set that you need to be careful about this set must not be included in domain of our function f o g that is a composite function right otherwise we will have some ambiguity so in order to eliminate the ambiguity we need to follow these two rules strictly very strictly okay so let me demonstrate how these rules can fail and then uh, we will uh, it i will demonstrate it through an example and let me take that example as let us write it here so example hmm so i have been given a function fx which is equal to 2 upon x minus 1 fine and another function that is given to me is gx which is equal to let us say 3 by x Hmm. and you want to find f o g of x and you also need to find domain 
of this function f o g. What is the domain? Domain if you recollect from your week 1, it is nothing but the set of allowed values for which the function is well defined. Whatever input values you are feeding into the function, this function should be well defined. This is the domain, this is the notion of domain. So, let us first see what is f o g of x and let us see if it gives you some hints about what can happen, correct. So, uh, what is f o g of x? Simply apply our definition, it is f of g of x, fine, no confusion in this. Then again you use that f of box is equal to 2 upon box minus 1. So, that gives me 2 upon g x minus 1 ok. Now what is g x? It is 3 by x. So, substitute what is g x? So, it will be 3 by x minus 1. Simplify this assume x is not equal to 0 and simplify this you will get 2 x upon 3 minus x. So, this is my f o g of x. Now, the question, the second question that is asked is, so I have given an answer what is f o g of x. So, my f o g of x is equal to 2 x upon 3 minus x, right. Now, if you look at this function, you look at this function, you can simply see that at x is equal to 3, this function is not defined because the denominator is becoming 0. So, 6 by 0 is undefined. So, this function is not defined at x is equal to 3. So, the domain of this function must exclude 3 that is very well known. But let us now see because of composition if I am eliminating any points. So, here you look at this function which is f x and you look at this function which is g x and I am calculating f o g of x. So, if x does not belong to domain of g then that function that particular value of x should not belong to domain of f o g that is the first rule that we have to implement. So, rule 1 what is the rule 1? If x does not belong to domain of g that must imply x does not belong to domain of f o g. So, what is that point? Let us look at what is g x. g x is 3 by x. Right? So, this function is well defined only when x is not equal to 0. Right. So, x is not equal to 0. So, x is equal to 0 cannot belong to domain of g. So, x equal to 0 do not belong to domain of g. So, naturally I will enforce that x equal to 0 should not belong to domain of f o g. Yes. So, now you may come up with some argument that when you look at this function, when you look at this function, if I substitute x is equal to 0, <coughs> if I substitute x is equal to 0, I am getting 0 upon 3, right. Then this function is well defined because the answer is 0, that is what your argument will be. But no, why? I will tell you. Because when do we, when when we were, while we were coming to this particular form, what we were doing actually is we were multiplying a numerator and denominator by x, or we are taking assuming x not equal to zero, we are taking this x on the numer on the numerator side and multiplying by x, right? And that is where we have reached this point. If we had not assumed x is not equal to 0, then we would not have reached this point. Therefore, x is not equal to 0 
is a valid condition still even when you cannot see anything visible over here because I am composing the two functions where x is not equal to 0 is outside the domain. Okay. So, let us come to the next rule, rule 2. That rule 2 was if g of x does not belong to domain of f, right, then I am having a problem. So, that rule we have figured out like x such that x such that gx does not belong to domain of f must be excluded. So, let us look at our function f. What is our function f? It is 2 upon x minus 1. In this case, x is equal to 1. I have a function where the denominator is 0. So, x is equal. So, let me write for the sake of completeness fx is equal to 2 upon x minus 1. This is well defined when x is not equal to 1. So, so this also this point x is not equal to 1 should also be eliminated from the domain of FOG. So, what should be the domain of FOG? All other points the function f and g are well defined. So, domain of FOG must be set of all x's belonging to real line such that x is not equal to 0 and x is not equal to 3. Okay. This comma means and or if you want me to be precise I will write and. Right. Another quick exercise that you can do in order to verify whether you have understood the concept of composition of function and the domain is you have been given two functions fx is equal to 1 upon x plus 1 and g of x is equal to 1 upon x and you are asked to find f o g of x and the domain of f o g. So, you can quickly solve this problem and check whether you have understood what you are supposed to understand. Thank you.